What's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into another video. Obviously, today's video title already gives it away. We are working again on the 91 Honda CRX, converted to all-wheel drive. If you aren't familiar with the channel or don't know exactly what this build, make sure to go check out the uh, playlist that we have on this on how to all-wheel drive your Honda. And it has the full build breakdown as well as how to do this at your house. Now, today's video is going to be concerning something that has to do a lot with all-wheel drive components. Obviously, you have a front drive train with a transmission and a differential there and as well as a rear differential uh, for when we mounted this differential it seemed nice and sturdy but i think after all the abuse that it's gone through and the actual design of the differential mount uh, it's not really holding up to the best of, it, of its capabilities so today we're actually going to be showing you a video clip that i recorded yesterday when we finally did get the car running again after doing the clutch swap it was up on all four and i wanted to kind of uh check out this vibration that i had been getting under a uh, heavy load uh, obviously now this video that I'm about to show you is under no load since it's onto the jack stands or very little load actually and it's still mimicking the problem that I think that we were having before. That being said, let me click click that being said, let me click play on the uh, video from yesterday and you can see that right here. Obviously, the front bar, which is the mount, uh, which uh, I put a picture in right there for you. The front bar has bent. That gave leeway for the rear to have its uh, play from the subframe, because these are very weak subframes in the factory, to show itself more apparent. Now, there are a lot of kits that rely more on the lower control arm and the lower control on arm point to actually hold the diff mount into place which is a little bit sturdier. Obviously, it has uh, that point of contact on the bottom instead of in the center, since the center on these cars is very flimsy, uh, of the subframe I'm talking about. Now, there are other kits like the S1 built kit, which uses top, top points that bolt on, bottom points that bolt on, as well as a few places that you can weld as well. I think that's probably one of the strongest kits on the market right now. There's a few other companies who use similar designs also that are really good. S1 built uh, differential, I think, is really nice if you guys want to check that out. Uh, we could end up going to Tampa and picking up one of those kits and putting it on the car, but uh, I want to kind of show a, a fix for if you have this style, not specifically from just this company, but from other companies as well, or homemade differentials. A lot of people make uh, differential mounts here at home and they run into a similar problem because the front bar starts to bend and the subframe on the back just doesn't have enough strength to hold it into place. You can see the front bar is bent. And to begin with, the plates that we had with the kit uh, they're kind of flimsy and really small so the contact spot right here you can already see it started cracking a little because i guess the uh, body is it didn't adhere to the weld very well and uh you can see it really bends all over and goes back down uh, my biggest thing right now is i'm gonna have to drain the fuel because i have a fuel line that runs right there and once we cut this out and weld on the new bar that we're going to be using uh, that's going to have to get welded close to it and i don't want any fuel or flammable liquid anywhere near our weld so that being said i'm going to go ahead and drain all the fuel from the tank and uh, once that is done we can actually start cutting that bar out and mocking up the new one all right i have off the rail the feed line and i'm just going to key on and turn on my fuel pump now it's going to start feeding right here it shouldn't take long it is a basho 44 pump so it flows pretty good it's that shape line all the way to the front so should come out pretty quickly okay so we have the top bar unbolted a kind of a bad angle to show you, you can see the bolts aren't there um the feed line uh, i have it drained out and i put some electrical tape over just to seal it up if there's any type of leak then the rest of the line that continues to the front just looped it inside of the car have it resting on the body right there straight up with a little electrical tape so it won't leak anything it's not like caps but it'll work um so yeah now that this is unbolted you can see a little better all the flex that the rear has uh, my hand's not as steady but hopefully you guys can pick that up so uh, real basic i'm gonna cut off the ends right here i'm gonna try to cut as clean as possible and keep this nice and straight but uh considering how um uh, considering how I might need to grind this down, I might end up just doing that for ease. Same goes for the other side. But I'll actually cut this out right now and see what we're working with. Alright guys, hopefully we're good right there. You can actually really see the bent bar from this angle. You can see like kind of 
arrows upwards. But um, here, maybe I can bend it. You see all the flex? Yeah, that shouldn't be there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this out right now. Obviously, eyeglasses for safety. If you had a mask, even better. bar is out ladies and gentlemen let's skip forward a couple days into the future now originally i was going to use this square tubing this was about the sturdiest piece of square tubing that i could find locally everything else had the super super thin wall and uh once i ended up cutting this to length and setting it inside of the car you can already see it looks super massive like it's really big um so we weren't going to run this because when i test fit it in the car in the little tunnel that it has up top where you guys saw where i cut out the old uh regular pipe or whatever you want to call it um, it was way too big. So that being said, I went online and I ordered this. I believe it's an inch square tubing or an inch and a quarter or something with, uh, I want to say quarter inch or three sixteenths wall, which is super nice and sturdy. This is what we're going to use to make the mount. Um, that being said, I still have some plates that I want to plate the frame with before I actually weld this on. And, um, I got to go under the car and kind of like test fit it. But, uh, yeah, this is what we're going to use. Not that big stuff. I think I'm going to cut out the clips where I said that I was going to use this, but this is what we originally wanted to use. And I just wanted to show you guys that we switched over to this, ordered it online. It took like a week to get here, but it is uh, nice and sturdy and I think it should be perfect for what we need. So I'm making these little plates to actually mount onto the frame and then off the frame, have the plate and then off the plate to the actual uh, tubing. That way it has more surface area and a thicker metal to weld on and get a nice hot weld so it actually sticks on well. Uh, this is before I clean it up. This is after and... I cleaned it all the way around the back, not as much, but where we're going to be welding. And I added a little bevel on the corners or on the sides. That way, it, I guess it's better for welding. I'm just trying to you know, learn stuff at home. So it's not like I went to school for this or anything, but um, so I'm trying my best right there. going to clean up the other one. And then once that's in place, I can just like magnetize it up there and then measure off of that how much I need off the uh, square tubing and my measurements from there. I ended up getting some slightly longer bolts since I use a slightly thicker steel. Still have washers and I slotted out basically the bolt holes like the other kit had just so uh, I really don't need it to be honest with you since this isn't like a universal kit. This is going on to my car specifically and I could have centered the holes as I was welding it on and tacked it in place. But I still wanted to have that slide, you know, function or whatever. Uh, it's a lot thicker than the stuff that was on the original kit. So definitely going to be a lot better. But uh, this is all ground down, beveled on the sides and ready to be uh, placed up. Just going to test fit it on the car with the plates as well. And uh, now we're getting everything. This should be the last part. We should be ready to actually uh, measure things out and do final cuts. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that. All right, so loosely placed into the location. Uh, the plate's on there. Square tubing is in place. Um, the original mounts that came with the other kit, they basically ripped the little weld area out. So I just cleaned it all off. This isn't totally done being clean, but... Essentially what I'm going to do, this is a tight fit as of right now, the other side's down, but uh, it butts up against there so you can't really fit anything in there. So I just have to cut a little bit off the ends of the square tubing and I can weld on the actual nice thick plates just about right there. So since there are two plates, I'm going to take off just under two plates worth on the end right here. And uh, that should allow for us to like have a nice tight fit. And then I'll go from there with a little flap disc and clean as necessary and uh, get a really nice tight fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get under, out from under the car and take off a little bit on the ends and uh, start mocking it up right here. All right, so the reason I didn't record this is there's so much going on over here and I have barely any room under here, but I tacked up the plates to the bar and the bar to the front plate uh, where the differential itself lies and it is pretty close to the body on where I'm gonna weld it. Yes, I know the frame rail is a little bit lower uh, or the, excuse me, the front mount is a little bit lower than what the frame rail is on the CRX and obviously there's that big hole from the old mount, but it is reaching nice up there and I'm gonna weld as much as I can as possible. And I think it should should still be a lot stronger than what it used to be. Uh, that being said, I burned myself a bunch cause I'm welding upwards and I don't have a lot of room, 
But uh, I'm gonna unbolt this real quick and uh, try to weld it off the car and show you guys from there. This was actually a real pain to wiggle out of there, uh, especially because the diff is still mounted on the back. But I'm actually happy that it was a hard uh, removal because that means that it's a tight fit. And if you see, I had to, you can kind of see that the sides go inwards a little. Uh, when I was actually cutting this rod, I have, I don't have it marked anymore, but right there I had a uh, short side is what I sharpied it with. And uh, basically that was, the top was a little bit shorter than the bottom just so I could have the plates on the frame rails nice and flat and the bar as flat as possible onto those plates to have the best contact. Uh, these welds, these tack welds on the back right here absolutely sucked because I had done this tack weld and um, I couldn't fit my helmet under there so I tried just closing my eyes and then I pressed the button by accident and um, yeah, I kind of blinded myself to do these back ones as well. These came out okay. Uh, that one was not that great but there's a good one on the bottom. Now I'm gonna clean it all up with a wire wheel, get it all cleaned up with acetone, and weld it all up. All right, I got it all wire wheeled as well as wiped down with acetone and all the areas that I'll be welding. Uh, I have this little thick piece of metal that I uh, used the other day just when I was welding, so if I do end up uh, heating up the metal, it won't go directly to the um, plastic bench. Not the best, but it works. I'm gonna go ahead by start welding the back of the differential mount, and then I'll do the plates. So uh, yeah, it is gonna be quite a lengthy process, so I'm just gonna put it on time-lapse, and we'll see you in a few minutes. So you have about 70% of it welded. I have the uh, part that goes to the differential itself and the passenger side drive, the frame rail, if I'm not mistaken. These are already done. This wheel came out pretty good. Obviously it's still flux, flux core, so it has all the bits and pieces all over the place. Uh, this one also, I think it came out pretty good. And something that I really noticed and that I really like is uh, this obviously I have to stop on the weld and go over to the other side since it's square. So I couldn't do one continuous. But you can see the heat, how it distributed on the flat piece that I was welding and it's uh, all consistent. So that's a pretty good sign that it's actually penetrating and penetrating the same instead of being choppy and whatnot. Also got the sides done right there. These were the second welds that I did. The first weld that I did, I was trying just to do a continuous speed instead of doing the circles that I normally do. This, for example, is circles to try to give like that dime effect and keep consistent. This, I just tried going all at once and I really didn't like it. Obviously, I like trying new things, so this is what I was trying to do and it didn't come out well. Uh, still penetrate, obviously. You can see the heat and whatnot on both sides and as you were welding, you could see both metals puddling. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm more happy with the other ones, how they came out. Now all I have left to do is um, this one right here. And one thing that I had read when doing roll cages, actually I didn't read, this was actually off of uh, uh, Meticulous's, um, whatchamacallit, YouTube channel. Uh, he was saying that when you're welding, for example, a roll cage that's just a solid tube, you can't weld all around it without doing a breather hole uh, because the gas will basically like pop the weld or something like that. That being said, I'm gonna do most of it and then I'm gonna drill a little hole on this plate right there. That way the air can escape from there so it doesn't compress and explode. Um, not explode, but like crack the weld. So that being said, I'm gonna weld up like 80% of this side and then I'll do a little hole on the end. So given how I have the vise for the drill press set up, I can't really uh, set it up so I can drill through one of the plates. I'm just gonna drill through the top of this with a very small drill bit to allow it to escape. Uh, I don't think it should do anything against the actual structural integrity or anything. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill that right now. And uh, I'll be back in just a second, guys. All right, that should be nice and good to allow that air to escape. And let's go ahead and finish welding this up. Looks like that little pinhole is doing work because that was the last weld right there. And she came out pretty good. All right, guys, I'm gonna let this cool down for a little bit, clean it up real quick, and uh, show you guys the finished product. I'm not gonna lie, I am super proud of this. Um, I'm not a welder, I'm new to it. I'm trying to learn at home. But to have gone from this flimsy piece of metal that's all bent to have made a nice sturdy looking bracket 
And I mean, it looks sturdy, but I'm sure it is super sturdy as well. I'm like, not to toot my own horn, but I'm really happy, guys. I'm really proud of myself. All right, guys, without uh, bragging anymore, I'm going to let that cool down. And uh, I'll give it a little coat of paint on the parts that are I won't be able to reach once it's in the car, like up here, the bar itself right there. And I'll leave these areas nice and clean and exposed. I'll hit it with acetone again to clean it up. And I'll clean up the frame rails. That way we can weld that plate directly onto the car. Got it mocked up roughly into place. Obviously, the bolts aren't in yet. But I have it onto the surface of the differential. Both sides are on the frame rail where it's going to sit once it gets welded. So I'm just going to make a mental note. I have to clean up this whole area right here. I might even sharpie it and then uh, get flap disking away and try to get as much exposed metal as I can on there. That way we can weld it up onto a clean surface. But uh, this is just so I can have in my mind where I need to get all of the paint off of. Uh, once that is done, then I'll go ahead and paint this bar like I told you guys I would. And then I uh, just leave the ends exposed and paint the ends once it's already welded on. Only thing I do want to apologize, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but I don't have power in the garage at the moment. We're working on getting that back up. But uh, we just got done cleaning right now, the floor and everything. And uh, the bar is welded in. It was a very awful position. I have almost no room under there. And uh, the welder was all big and bulky as well as the mask. So uh, I had to have a little light there since I don't have light in the garage. Um, and I just couldn't fit my camera to show you guys, but it is all welded in now. You can see the welds aren't nice at all. I'll be honest with you. I could barely access some of the top and you can see some of it got uh, bled through. The frame is like super thin right there. It's uh, really a shame. And then I got some of this right there as well as on the back and on the top, um, on the back side a little bit as well. It's not 100% welded on, but I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, just one weld right here on one side of the plate like one instance right there is already more is already more than the whole uh what we used to have so it's definitely no matter what a lot stronger than what it was and you can see it's bolted up and whatnot nice and uh, snug up there and um the drive shaft is a little straighter than what it was before and i have a bunch of clearance up top you can see the lines where it was hitting before and just the lines itself shows you how much it was moving before so now we have a lot more clearance. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and since it's already painted and drying and whatnot, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the fuel system again, uh, get the car on all four jack stands, at least up in the air, so I can do the test that we did at the beginning of the video and give it that blip throttle and see if it's still moving. Obviously, I know that it's not gonna do it because it's a nice sturdy mount. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get started with that. And let me show you in just a second that little clip. Just got it started right now. Gonna let it warm up for a minute. Then I'm gonna set the camera down. I think the angle was right about here in the last video, so I'll do the similar angle. Right, so you just saw it right there there was almost no flex that being said that does finish up the video for today this video is actually the one that follows to the one that i did the subframe or not the subframe excuse me the tubular front end for the integra while we're here let me show you if you haven't already checked out this video essentially we took out the oem core support which is right down there and we fabricated up these uh little tubular mounts for the headlights it's uh by itself right now because the wrinkle black paint that i put on it is still drying it's not fully cured yet but the headlights go on perfectly. Um, the bumper, I mentioned in that video, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep the exact, the exact same bumper or do a, a three-piece front end in the future. That's why I haven't made mounts for that yet. And also a couple people asked about this, so I might as well address it right now. What am I doing with the hood latches? So those are the latches that we have on the car right now, which is basically the uh, arrow latch style that clicks over and then has the pin straight in, the bolt goes through it. Um, I'm not making mounts for that yet because I'm not sure if you can notice it on video, but these aren't perfectly lined up on the hood. This is an older hood that's actually all worn as well. Once the Integra comes back out, I want to have brand new carbon fiber hood to put on. So once I get the new hood, then I'll make little brackets off of these brackets to actually attach to the hood. This is basically the floating headlight style that I made, but it's not complete in the sense that I haven't added those brackets yet. 
or the intercooler is not on the car. And once the intercooler is there, I think that'll end up uh, tying this in to the other side, uh, making a bracket off of that down into the intercooler and uh, also add in the hood latch ones. So this was just to show you like the first basis of it and in the future, we'll actually add on to it, which is great because it's weldable rod, just gonna gotta, gotta clean it up on one side and uh, weld onto it, so it should be good. But yeah, that does sum up the video for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. I would really appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned in the last couple of videos, I did get laid off my job in the last couple of days. So I'm going to be trying to make as many videos as possible and bring as much content to you guys. So I would really appreciate it if you guys shared the channel, hit like, leave me a comment down below. I read them every single one and I try to get back to almost as many as I can. As I try to get back to every single one whenever I can. But uh, yeah, that is the end of the video. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for tuning in and have a great rest of your day. Peace.